So let's solve this problem. Determine the reactions at the supports A, C, and E of the compound beam. All right, well, we find where A is. There's A. We look at it. What type of support is that A? It's like uh, strongly embedded, attached. It, and so when you want to cut this beam free from the surroundings, you come in at this location A, and not only can it have a non-zero AX and a non-zero AY, it can also have a non-zero M sub A. And then we look at support C. Okay, what type of uh, support is C? Rocker. It's a rocker support. And then you say, oh, when I come in here and I'm going to cut that part of the, it away, I'm going to have my beam sitting here and I'm going to have a support which is just a normal at C. That's what a rocker does. A rocker can't have anything in the X or in that plane where the rocker is on. And then we look at the support at E. What is this? Rocker. And so when we cut through, cut free that section, we're just going to get a N sub E. All right. All right. So last thing I want to spend word on, we understand what the word beam means, don't we? Yeah. It's a one-dimensional supports load. Look at it. It has a distributed load right here, right? And it has a point load right here. But it's a compound beam. What do they mean by compound? Remember, like, concurrent force system? First time you see that word, what exactly is a concurrent force system? Well, here, what is a compound beam? It's not just a simple one beam, one solid piece. What's special about this is that it's pin-connected at B. See that? It's also pin-connected at D. So... How many sections of this beam do we have? We have a section that goes A to B. We have a section that goes B, C, D. And then we have a section that goes B, D, E. And they didn't label it. Hey, if I was an illustrator, I'd put a point F out there, and I'd say, oh, that 18 kilonewton load is applied at, at location F. But they didn't, right? So I'll, I'll just introduce it, and I'll call it DEF. So I have three sections of a solid beam. It's, and we're studying rigid bodies. There's no deformation in our beam. Save that fun for the next class. Solids, where we get deflection in beams, as well as in columns. But in statics, it's just rigid body equilibrium. Okay, so no de deflection there. Okay, so how do I solve for those reactions at A, C, and E? First of all, I figure out what I'm looking for. I'm looking for AX, AY, and M sub A, as well as N sub C and N sub E. How many unknowns? Five. I need five answers. This problem calls for five solutions. Okay, now... I can do a free body diagram of the entire system. If I cut the entire system free, I will get my AX, my AY, my M sub A, my N sub C, and my uh, N sub E out here. And then I have my load, point load of 18 kilonewton. And what do we want to do about that distributed load right away? Turn it into a single point load applied at the special point. And this one's easy. It's a rectangular. It's not a trapezoidal or anything or a triangular. So, so what's going to be a magnitude of my resultant single force to replace that distributed load? What's going to be the magnitude? So we have, it's over a span of six meters. And it has a 4 kilonewtons per meter, 6 times 4, 24 kilonewton point load. And where do we apply it? Do we apply it right above C? Or do we apply it a little bit over, 1 meter over, right? 
So we apply it one meter over because it's right in the middle of this six meters. And uh, C is located four and two, so it's, it's three and three, so it's actually one meter over. And so here is my uh, 24 kilonewton uh, equivalent point load where we're placing that distributed load. Okay. Now, um, boy, that sure doesn't look very nice, does it? That's a 24 kilonewton, and this is an 18 kilonewton. Okay. Can we solve for any of those five unknowns from the free body diagram of our entire system? Yes. Okay, which one can we solve for? AX. That's obvious. That's great. So you do the sum of the forces in the X equal to zero, and AX is lonely. <laughs> it's just zero by itself. Okay, any others do you think we can solve for? You might spend some time on it, but I don't think you can, unless you have some better insight into the problem than I have. So we're going to dive into the individual free body diagrams of each member. And so we're going to have member A to B, we're member B, C, D, and member D, E, F. And when we do that, we have to worry about those pins, the pins at B and the pins at D because they have some internal action, reaction so, uh, forces. So, uh, uh, boy, how should I do this? Um, let me scroll up. Maybe I can do it that way. Insert new page. Let me try this. All right. So if we focus on this member A, B, D, A, I'm sorry, A, B, then we're going to get the AX. Let's leave AX off since we already solved for it at zero. We'll just solve for AY and M sub A, and we have this something happening at B. Without any more information, uh, sometimes you have some great insight, BX, but that's going to be zero because AX is zero. And then there's uh, this uh, probably going to be pushed down, so that's BY. Then I'm going to draw the member. Oh, it's not that long, is it? It's this long. That'll be for the member B, C, D. Yes. Um, possibly. Okay. Uh, let's talk, you have to ask some good questions. Let's do this. What would happen if uh, the magnitude of this distributed load went to essentially zero? It went to 0 0.004 kilonewtons per meter. It's as, as if it just went away, right? Then what would this 18 kilonewton load do at the tip? Wouldn't it make it want to rotate around the rocker? Wouldn't if I focused on this member out here, D, E, whatever I call this F, D, E, F, this 18 pushing down, I would have some ends of E pushing up. I would have to have at that D, I would have to have D, Y down on that. That's, that would hold it in equilibrium. If dy tried to lift it, boy, it sure would rotate, wouldn't it? It would rotate around that rocker supported E. So um, that means that when I look at this member, it's being lifted up. And we, we, you know, playing this concept, forget about this distributed load, then we have this support here. And uh, what's it going to do over here? Lift up. And then this has to push down. Okay. So maybe that's part of the thought process to try to guess or ascertain how much it is. But let's say that uh, you, you change, change it a little bit and uh, this goes to zero out here. This 18 kilonewtons goes to zero. It's, it's 0 0.00018 kilonewton, right? You don't make it, you just let it go nearly to zero. And then this now is back to four kilonewtons per meter. Okay. If that's true, 
and I replace it by a single big point load right here. We said that magnitude was, what was it again? 24, 24 kilonewton. And it's a little bit to the left of my support at C. What's it going to make this member, if I focus on member B, C, D do, the middle one, B, C, D do, wouldn't it make it want to rotate? So would B, Y want to help hold it up to support it, to balance it? Yeah. So in both cases, this 18 kilonewton plus this distributed load would make B, Y want to pull up on the end of member B, C, D. All right. But somebody could play the game of, uh, okay, don't, don't pull, push down with uh, 18 kilonewtons. Pull up with uh, 55 kilonewtons. Well, now I could see that I could start to change which direction BY is. Okay. So I think you were asking a very difficult question. I think I tried to answer it the best I can. Um, and it depends on some of the magnitudes of some of the loads that go on there as to what is the real positive direction. If you assume it incorrect, you'll just get a negative answer and you'll still be correct. I think we have MA and MC backwards in the answers. Okay. Okay, let me do this. Uh, we just talked about for this problem, BY acting at the end of member AB will be downward directed, right? If it's downward directed, does AY have to be up it's for member AB to have some of the forces in the Y equal to zero? Yeah. So I'm trying to avoid negative signs. And so I do think this is the correct positive direction for BY as well as for AY. Oh, you guys are way ahead of me. You're already solving this problem, and I'm just talking through it. <laughs> Okay, well, let's, let's, let me try and work through it, and maybe something will come on. Maybe I need to speed up, huh? Sorry about that. Oh, I do need to speed up. Well, let's do this. Um, I drew out, this is uh, dy here, dy there, by there, by there, both of those, all of the individual free body diagrams. Let's, uh, let's come over here. We already determined, no, we did not determine what n sub e is, but uh, could I do the sum of the moments around point d, for this member, D, E, and I'm going to call it D, E, F. Could I do some of the moments around point D? And if I did the sum of the moments around point D, what do you find for N sub E? You would find that N sub E, uh, let me write it out, N sub E times that moment arm distance, which is 6 meters, is equal to 18 times uh, 9 meters, 18 kilonewton. And so we find that N sub E comes in at 27 kilonewton. So you already solved for it, and that's what you got? Did you get 27? Okay, good. So now we can actually get dy from the sum of the forces in the y for member D, E, F. And dy comes in at, what's it come in? 9. 9 kilonewton. True? Very good. All right. Now we could come over to member B, C, D. This is 9 kilonewton on this member, 24 down. And we don't know B, Y. But if we did the sum of the moments around point B for member B, C, D, you could solve for N sub C. And if you do that, you get the N sub C is 4.5 kilonewton. True? Do we want to work through that one in more detail? So what did I just say? For the member B, C, D, do the sum of the moments around point B, you'll get an equation. You'll be able to solve for N sub C is equal to 4.5 kilonewton. Once I have that, then for member B, C, D, I do the sum of the forces in the Y equal to zero, that gives me an equation. I could solve for BY is equal to 10.5 kilonewton. You got that? 
You got it? Is you, are you following? So now, finally, I shift over to member AB, and I have 10.5 kilonewton down at the tip. So I'll do the sum of the moments about point A equal to zero for the member AB. And this is what's tricky. This is a supporting reaction, MA, because it's a cantilevered beam. And so what we'll have is we'll have MA making it want to rotate in the counterclockwise, balanced by BY times that offset, which is 3 meters, making it want to rotate in the clockwise. And that allows me to solve for M sub A. So it's the BY times 3 meters. And so 10.5 times 3. 22.5 kilonewton meter. 10.5 times 3. Oh, you're right. Did I type that wrong? It's 31. You're right. 31.5. Thank you. Did I put that correctly on my equation sheet? Yeah, it's, it's correct there. Okay. All right, did that help? Okay, and then the very last is uh, AY. So some of the forces in the Y equal to zero. AY is balanced only by BY, and so it's uh, 10.5 um, uh, kilonewton. So we solve for AY, M sub A, solve for N sub C, solve for N sub E, way over here. And this is a summary of all the parts. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, I'm going to my office. Ask me questions, please. Study. Do your homework. You can get 100 on this next test on Friday. You can. <laughs>